so I've gone ahead and finished um, one side of my wheel liner here. So I had already gone in and bolted it in with these M8 washers, but I wanted to go get some proper nice thick M6 countersunk ones. Um, they look a bit nicer, uh, a bit more professional. So all I need to do is um, make a bracket to secure this side too. And that wheel liner will be done. But you can see I've made a little cutout here. I've popped this back on. And one thing I wanted to mention with this wheel liner is because obviously I've still got all this gap here. Now I could just get another piece of this and just sort of bolt it through here just to keep it out of there. Um, I might do it, I might not, I'm not sure yet. Um, really the only reason I've got this here is to protect the uh, door harness. So I went off road for all of about a minute. Uh, after I removed my wheel guards and I just had so much so many sticks like fucking being flung up into this door harness So that's literally Pretty much the only reason I'm putting that in there is to protect that door harness and also just because I think it looks a bit tidier So now that we're nearing the end of this phase of the build I just want to go and show the last little things I'm doing at the moment. So as you can see here This flare is still exactly the same as it was before. It's what I've got is I've got this um, sort of rubber edging. I've already gone and put over the bumper trim that I've done because I really thought that was ugly and I think that's cleaned it up very nicely. Like it looks way more legit. So if I come over this side, you'll see I've actually gone and got the rubber edging on on this side, but I haven't done the bumper. So that's the bit that I'm gonna do now. Um, I did fuck up the bumper cut a little on this side so it probably won't be as tidy, but the big thing is that it does just clean up some of that ugliness and uh, yeah, then I'll go and do the flare on the other side too. But yeah, I just wanted to show that off because I think it looks much, much, much better and I think when I clean it, it'll look fucking schmick. And there it is, that's one side of the trim done. Like again, not perfect, but you can't go ahead and tell me that doesn't look better. Alright, so the other day I just popped into the local engineering shop, GJR Engineering. I got these um, 10 mil, one inch spacers in the drive shaft. Just alloy, nothing fancy, just need to complete this drop. So I'm just going and putting those in now. Okay, so today we're finishing up the engine drop finally. I've got my metric fine thread rod. You can see I've gone and tapped it in. Um, I'm a little worried about getting the nuts on because those threads up there are fucked, but we'll figure it out. But yeah. All right, so I'm done for the night because you might see all these lumps on my fucking feet and legs. I'm being molested by mozzies out here. So you can see I've got my two extended studs there. This one here I'm probably going to pull out and just grind down the top so I can get that nut on cleanly. You can see I've got one nut on top, I haven't fully tightened it down. Um, now, so if you can see there, see how I've got a nut underneath one of those studs? Obviously because it doesn't have that middle piece that the factory studs have that stop it from rotating in any further. I've just secured another 17mm nut underneath. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down when I tighten them both down, but I need to... Um, go pick up two more 17 mil nuts because I've used the nut for the one next to it. But yeah, as you can see now, my um, torque mount has dropped down considerably. It's still quite uh, terrible, but that's the engine drop in. All my subframe drop is also complete. So now all I have left to do is um, finishing up these rear disc brake conversion. So you can see I've still got the drum here. I'm going to go ahead and make a guide for the complete dis disassembly and installation of the rear disc conversion um, and I'm actually going to show you how I've done it which is a bit different to everyone else because I've um, figured out a way to mount the bleeder upright instead of uh, upside down which will make it a lot easier to bleed if I'm on the track or whatever and I have an issue. Alright so what I've just gone and done is I've pulled the um, valve cover off, I've just put the new bolt seals on, new valve cover gasket, you can see the old one here. Um, and here it is, all um, put back together. I um, did a little bit of tidying of my um, plug leads. I still want to replace these down the line, but for now that it's true, I gotta 
take these zip ties off I couldn't find my masking tape so I just used them to mark but yeah that's one more thing off the list you can see I've also finished this side of my wheel liner and it's still need to super glue this edging on um, because I know this is just gonna come off so I'll super glue that on and that'll be good as well so while we're out here um, finishing things up, what I've just gone and done today um, in the last couple of minutes is I chopped my engine studs down. Um, I just wanted them shorter. I couldn't get my deep socket on properly to tighten these nuts down. Um, I've gone and put some thread locker on the stud and the cap nut down there. So those aren't going to be backing out. That's nice and secure now. Um, and then, yeah, I've also finally got those properly tightened down. So this whole engine drop is completely totally 100% finished now I'm just gonna go ahead I just bought some super glue so I'll super glue all this edging on we're gonna go ahead and show you something pretty fun um, I'm out at my RD1 CRV today we're gonna go ahead and uh, figure out how to put these rear discs on a RD1 CRV okay so to begin with we have quite a list of parts we are going to need to acquire so first thing you'll need to purchase Greg rules on the uh, CRV Facebook page and on Instagram, grolls87, I believe it is, he makes these stainless steel brake disc conversion brackets for the rear. As you can see, I've already bolted mine on on one side. Um, so that is part number one. Now with that, he will actually send you this list of instructions and parts. So the next step is we need to acquire the parts for the calipers. So that means rotors, calipers, and pads for a 97 to 2001 prelude. That's it. Rotor, caliper, pads there. Then we need to get a 94 to 97 Accord handbrake cable. I bought mine brand new off eBay. I've got one side in already. And then lastly, what you're going to need to buy is your brake lines and some bolts. So the bolts are just M10 by 1.25 thread in uh, 20 mil length. Now you need six of those there to bolt the bracket to mount the caliper onto where the uh, drum brake used to be. So I'll go into that a bit more. Um, one interesting thing I've done that I really wanted to uh, make this video because of is I've managed to get the bleeder mounted upright. Now that's a little bit of a modification and a little bit of a variation from what the kit I bought uh, said to do. Uh, that's because I didn't want to mount the bleeder upside down. So I'm going to show you exactly how I've done this specific method. Um, but first, I'll show you what our drum brakes look like inside. And we can get to disassembling them. So, first thing I'm going to have to do is there's, there's one bolt there. There's one bolt there. There is where one bolt there. And one bolt there. So what you do, um, disassemble the internal braking structure of the drum brake you just got to go ahead and take those bolts out and you just go ahead and cut to those bolts um, and the whole thing can just pull right off um, it is a bolt-on hub however um, all-wheel drive you got to pull the axle um, I'm not doing that so I did try it on the other side to find out whether I could just undo the bolt and pull the hub you can't unfortunately the um, CV shaft does retain it in there, so you gotta pop that out completely, which means pulling the diff out. So I'll probably do the same thing I did with the other side, which is um, <laughs> I used bolt cutters to cut in. I know a lot of people use a saw and a grinder um, to cut into it, but then I just don't wanna, I don't wanna scratch up my arm. And the extra 20 minutes of cutting with bolt cutters didn't really suck that much, and I didn't cut a single piece of my arm, so, that's what I'm going to do just because because I like to be careful around stuff that might rust and I know I can just repaint it I've already I've had to do that there but look it's just shit so I don't want to have to fuck with that all right I've got that brake line disconnected from the back here you can see now with those bolts removed buddy okay get out of here come on okay so I've gone ahead and disconnected the brake line at the back and removed those four bolts you can very easily just move the hub to, uh, you know, get your socket in through these. Makes it an absolute treat to uh, get those bolts out. I'm just going to go ahead now and cut that off, and we can move on with the process. Alrighty, so as you can see, I've finally cut that off. 
I say finally because it has absolutely been over an hour. Um, I did use the angle grinder just to make the initial cuts into this, but I still use the um, bolt cutters and I sort of just twisted and plied it off and um, yeah, so here we are. That's completely removed now, so we can get rid of that. Okay, before we go any further, I just wanted to go over something because you're going to be seeing me cut into the caliper shortly and I just want to explain why. So, I mentioned at the start of this video that I mounted the bleeder upright. Now, that's actually not the standard mounting by the instructions provided for the rear disc conversion brackets. Um, it's something that I've figured out on my own. Now, what it requires you to do is actually come down to the caliper where the handbrake cable is normally retained and cut that entire bracket off. The reason for that is because, as you can see there, it would cause some clearance issues with the trailing arm. Either way, you have to trim the trailing arm, but if I was going to cut into my trailing arm, I wanted to make damn sure it was worth it and make damn sure I wasn't doing it for a bleeder that was gonna be mounted upside down and cause me hell in the future. So, I've gone and cut that off. I'm gonna show you how I've done that. But I just wanted to say before we went any further that that's actually what I'm about to go and do in this video. Okay, so I've got my caliper bracket here. I'm just going to go ahead and thread that on through the back of this uh, mounting bracket. Okay, now with that on, I'm not going to tighten it down. Alright, so normally where we'd have collision is here. So what I've done here is I'm just grinding back part of that caliper bracket so I can fit that in the back. What you can see I've done there is I've just gone and grinded back where that, um, where's the line, where this would normally sit. Um, so that's for clearance on the trailing arm. I'll bring you over here. So that now mounts perfectly in the correct orientation with no collision on the trailing arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a test mount of this bracket. Uh, now that we've made those cuts, it should fit a lot better. Go ahead and get that bolt in up here. Just nice and out of the way. So, as you can see now, I'm still having a little bit of collision with the upper part of this lip here. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grind that down a couple of mil, and that should give us all the clearance we need for this caliper to bolt up right as rain. So, let's pull that out of the way and start cutting. So, again, all we're going to be cutting is just a little bit into here. Okay, so now that's the hardest part out of the way. We've done all the cutting we need to for this project. We've got clearance at our trailing arm for the caliper. We've got clearance at our caliper for the trailing arm. We've made those cuts. I do still want to clean these ones up a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much. Just get that down so there's no sharp edges or anything. Paint that so it's not going to rust on you, and then you can go ahead and mount that. Alright, so with that rear disc sort of looking good now, I've got that caliper sitting, drying. Um, I'm going to do two more coats at least. Um, so what I'm going in now and doing is I'm just going to pull the old handbrake cables out and start running that one. Okie dokie. So I've gone and got my brake pads in there. I run my brake uh, my brake cable just sort of for the most part. You can see the um, bracket down here for it will definitely be able to be bolted or welded up to that. And then if we follow it into the car, you'll see I've actually got it attached too with the handbrake up. Um, so as you can see, I've um, got my handbrake cable bracket mounted now. Two bolts through there. Haven't tightened it up. What you can see here though, is that it hasn't fucking worked. It's not long enough. Just making some extension pieces of metal for my handbrake cable. I, um, where did I put it? Had another piece. Tried this, it was a bit too short. So, um, got this, which is a bit longer. Should do the trick. Bolted that up. Tried to bolt it back up here and realized, ah, fuck, it's too short. So, 
third time's the charm. Okay, some great news. Um, I know I've skipped ahead a bit, but I've got these brakes all mounted up. Um, I got, I ended up getting custom stainless braided lines with a black uh, silicon hose exterior. I think it just looks a bit cleaner and it's also going to protect those brake lines a bit better. Um, so yeah, now my brake conversion is pretty much done. I still need to finish that handbrake. Um, as you can see, I've got that bracket, that temporary bracket mounted down there. All that's actually doing though is just retaining the cable out of the way. My new bracket will be fabricated to come around to the other side, all the way up the trailing arm bolting. So my new bracket will come up to there and then the cable will be retained here, which means this flat iron, which is currently just holding it in place, will be cable and then that can pull down and my handbrake will work perfectly. Now I cannot confirm nor deny the rumors that this car is actually already driving and that this vlog is coming out again weeks late. I also cannot confirm nor deny that I've done roughly 1500 kilometers on these new brakes and that they're working fantastically. Definitely cannot confirm or deny that. But damn, I can confirm. Looks bloody good. Unfortunately, I didn't film any more to do with the rear disc conversion that wasn't the guide that's also in progress. So if you're looking for a full guide on the upright bleeder mounting of the rear disc conversion, that is coming soon. I just need to wait till I finish fabricating that new handbrake retaining bracket because without that, it really is not a complete guide. Um, so that will be... Hopefully, I will have that done in the next couple of weeks, so you'll see that in the next vlog, and then that guide will be following that basically immediately because the rest of it is edited together it's just waiting on the uh, handbrake section of the guide now when it came time to put the wheels back on and get those brakes bled um i've never actually bred brakes in my life um i got the hoses connected up and everything all sweet um and i just got a cheap bleeder kit with that upright bleeder it was obviously easy enough to do a gravity fed system and uh, yeah, no air in the brakes. My first ever time bleeding brakes and I did it by myself. It took maybe 10, 15 minutes. So um, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I'm very, very, very glad that I did the upright bleeder method because um, I, can, I can already tell I would have been fucking kicking my head in if I had um, tried to bleed those solo and they were upside down. Anyway, with that all said, let's uh, move on to the next part of the build where I show you uh, what I've been doing these last few weeks. This big piece of steel that I have here is going to be fabricated into my bash plate. So you might have actually seen glimpses in the last couple of vlogs of a very different looking front grill that I had on there. I've pulled it back off because um, it's a fog light grill. I didn't want to show it off until I was done with it, um, like properly finished making up what I wanted, but that's not going to happen for a while. so. I figured I might as well show it. It's been in photos now, so. Um, I bought this off a Honda CRV buy swap sell parts page that I started for Australia because I want the Honda CRV community in Australia to grow. Now, it's not in the best condition, but it is something I've literally never seen before. It's probably the rarest CRV part I've ever seen because nowhere absolutely nowhere on this entire unit can I find any sort of IPF or IFP whatever it is branding which is the um, the circular fog light grill now that's the one that I'd seen and then when this popped up with these oval shaped fog lights I had no idea what to think it came with the Honda emblem I can't see IPF anywhere branded on this thing um, and yeah, it's just a very, very, very intriguing thing. I do have the other fog light lens, by the way. Um, I pulled it out because I needed to find... The whole reason I pulled the grill off is because I wanted to pull the fog light out to find out what bulb type it is, because they're quite dim as it is. I found out they're H3 halogen bulbs. So I'm kind of currently in the process of trying to figure out a um, HID conversion for it, because I don't want to put my light bar back there. That's, that's why I got it, and that's why I pulled it off, because I wanted to replace it with that grill, so I'm gonna do a HID conversion on it, and then um, when I paint the car, the entire car, that'll get painted. But yeah, so just for now, I've got that old grill on. Um, I still haven't actually got the high flow box finished. I need to finish making the mounts for it, so the snorkel's not piped up at the moment. Alrighty guys, that'll do us for this one. So in true Isaac fashion, I've clearly shot this 
weeks, if not months, after I finished filming the video, edited it, and realized, ah, damn, never shot an outro. Doesn't matter, get what you get. Clearly I'm clean shaven, even though next episode I'm not clean shaven. Try not to get confused by it. Look, time's just not on my side these days. Um, so we do have one very good thing to look forward to next episode, and that is that the last thing to get done, the clutch, is finally being done. First thing, um, so I'm really excited for that. And then following that, I'm going to get it taken to a clutch specialist to inspect why I've burnt through two clutches in less than 14,000 kilometers. I drove 4,000 kilometers on these tires with my OEM clutch. It had 280K on them when I got this and they lasted 4,000 kilometers. So I shouldn't be burning through a heavy duty clutch in 7,000 kilometers. I do not do that much off-road driving. Like I know I drive this thing hard, but I wheeled it harder on the stock clutch and it didn't die with these tires until I abused it by doing 7K rev burnouts in the sand. So. I know something's wrong, I'm getting it fixed, and uh, that's next episode, so look forward to it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.